Hello, hello! Pizza Packs here, and we're back with Modern Horizons 3 pre release kit number 13. I promise we're getting towards the end of these. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying doing these, but also I am looking forward to doing these for a different set. <laughs> I think in the future I should limit myself to like eight at the most instead of an entire case of 15. But we have awesome blue dye that we've had in all of them so far. Got a nice little pile of them over here. Got our pack, our six packs, our promo, and our little sheet. That is an ad for Bloodstained Mire. And a little guide on building a pre-release deck. We generally six, sit to... <laughs> we generally stick to the 17 land rule. Um, more or less. But, that's the whole thing. Then we have, for our promo, Primal Prayers. Two green green enchantment when it enters the battlefield gets two energy. Oh, this is the Alluren! Okay. Okay, 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 cool. There is an infinite life combo, um, that you can pull off in Limited with this card. It just takes one rare and one uncommon. And you can pull it off on turn four. Three. You can actually turn it off, pull it off on turn three. Which is pretty cool. So, Primal Prayers is our promo. Right about there. I've got three flip cards and the code. Here's the code. It is first come, first serve. Please leave in the comments if you redeem it. Just so people don't waste their time trying to redeem a code that's already been redeemed. And uh, you don't have to say thank you in the comments, but if you'd like to, that would be really nice. And shows that you have good manners. Because when someone gives us something, we say thank you. All right. Here's our six packs. Now let's get started. Pack one. I'm also going to try and make this video a little shorter than yesterday's. I uh, went right up to the 50 minute mark yesterday, so I'm going to try not to do that. We have Rose Cotton Knight. Void Pouncer. Nice. We have Petrifying Meddler. Strong. Temperamental Oozwag. Cool. Dream Drinker Vampire. Sneaky snacker. The sneaky snack. He's so sneaky. Bountiful landscape. Okay. Charitable levity. I haven't actually seen this one yet. Or if I have, I don't remember it. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast whenever a player casts a non-creature spell. Put a little collection counter on it, then if there are three or more. Sacrifice it if you do draw a card, then you may search a library for planes, put on the battlefield taps and shuffle. Oh, look. Okay. Oh, no, I have seen that. Okay. Grim Servant. Rowl in the Implicit Maze. That's an interesting one. Envoy of the Ancestors. Really good for the modified deck. And our retro card is Crick, Son of Yogmoth. Pretty powerful. So, definitely can get out of hand, especially in Limited. And, yet again, forgot to grab my rare sheet. <laughs> it's like I knew something felt a little off. We have Primal Prayers. Which is 166. That is our fourth Primal Prayers. We have Crick. Sunny Yogmoth, 274. That is our second crick, at least. I think I probably forgot to mark one. Then we have Flooded Strand. Very nice. 220. That is our fourth Flooded Strand. And now we just need a Polluted Delta, and we'll have an entire playset of fetches from the set. Oh, wait, no, we still need two Windswept Teeth. So, that's a thing. Flooded Strand. Nice, and Muster the Departed. 
Hey, we might be going with uh, white tokens this time. A little, maybe a little, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> little something. We have Grave Dig, Jolted Awake, Smelted Charge Bug, Demon Furrier, Basking Brood Scale, very nice. Reboding Landscape. Cyclops Supercharger. The Creation of Avison. Propagator Drone. Which one's this? Ooh, creatures you control have evolved. Ooh. You might be on a token strat. Bogart Trawler. Decree of Justice. Hey. That plus Propagator Drone? Heck yeah. Power Balance. We have so many of those. That is our seventh one that we've pulled. Plus we have another six from the uh, bundles that we opened. Riddle, Riddlegate Gargoyle Foil. Nice. Not pulling much blue this time around. Oh, green white tokens. Might be a thing here. Or black white tokens for that matter. Well, uh, no, we definitely want the green in there. Expel the unworthy. Glimpse the impossible, unfathomable truths. Malevolent rumble. Dross claw. Draven charm. Deceptive landscape. Ghostfire Slice. The Hunger Tide Rises. Another nice token strategy there. Cursed Wombat. Very nice. Expressive Iteration. Ooh. That's, one, that's the artist feature. That is pretty. Holy cow, that's pretty. Let's just go ahead and sleeve that up. Little expressive iteration. Very good. Meltdown. Guide of Souls. Ooh. Ooh. We have the we have the two hard parts of the combo to find. 29. Guide of Souls. That is our fourth Guide of Souls, but Guide of Souls and Primal Prayers is a combo. Then we have Aether Spark Foil and an Eldrazi token. Now we just need um, Shrieking Drake. Shrieking Drake goes infinite uh, with those two. You get infinite life. And infinite ETBs. Kami of the Jealous Thirst. Airy Auxiliary. Tune the Narrative. Molten, ga Molten Gatekeeper, which does infinite damage if you have the combo assembled. Evolution Witness. Sheltering Landscape. Battered Landscape. It That Heralds the End. Ooh. Definitely pushing us towards that token strat. Reckless Pyro... <laughs> Reckless Pyro Surfer. Strength of the Harvest. Pearl Medallion. There. First Wombat goes by... I'm mixing up all my colors. Pearl Medallion, 294. 294. That is our third Pearl Medallion. White of the Reliquary. Very nice. 207. That is our third White of the Reliquary. And a Wumpus Aberration. Again, I'm putting it in the wrong place. With a Foil Full Art Land. And it was a good series of packs. Pack 5. Still hoping for that Shrieking Drake. Or something that can self-bounce. Or just stuff that draws cards, too. Thriving Skyclaw. Utter Insignificance. Gift of the Viper. A Cursed Marauder. Dog Umbra. Snapping Voidcraw. Drownyard Lurker. Very nice. Indebted Spirit. Breaker of Creation. 
Okay. Wow. Okay. Urza's Cave. <laughs> Bespoke Battle Wagon. That's pretty strong, too. Buried Alive. Go along with that Jolted Awake. Polluted Delta! Hey! Polluted Delta. Let's see. 224. That is our fourth Polluted Delta. Very nice. Two fetches and one sealed pool. Oil tune the narrative and an arc. Angelic Aberration. I don't think I've seen that one yet. And then pack six. All right. Vetted Gargantua. Hex Gold Slip. Hanged Flames. Either Spike. Nightshade Dryad. Nice fixing there. Contaminated Landscape. Idol of the False Gods. Another great Eldrazi piece there. Reiterating Bolt. Is it Generatorium? Hmm. <laughs> Nesting Grounds. Okay. In the retro frame, nonetheless. Meteoric Mace. Womp womp. No, uh... No Shrieking Drake for us, but Sewing Mycospawn! Hey! That's a big one. 170. That is our fourth Sewing Mycospawn, micro also. Very nice. And a Seething Landscape Foil. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We just got all the... We just got all of the fixing in this, and just an, a massive number... Of colorless lands. Yeah, let's build something dumb. Come on. All right, so Guide of Souls definitely playing that because we got the thing to go with it. Traven, maybe expel. We're gonna try and avoid double cost of things, but Decree of Justice, maybe a Jolted Awake, Muster the Departed as a maybe. Envoy of the Ancestors seems really good. Rose Caught Knight can help us dig, right? It looks for an enchantment. Yeah, that digs for an enchantment. Nice. Let's see, none of that... None of that goes exactly where we're trying to. There's a little bit there, but... Skip that for now. What do we have in blue? We have tune. Double tune. Double Aether Spike is really nice. Let's see, there's Petrifying Meddler, and that's it. Like, we've got some energy stuff here, but we don't really need that. The Bespoke Battle Wagon's kind of nice. Being able to just power up and get more and more energy. But I don't... Th Wait a minute, we've got two blue fetches. That's just free. Blue is just free for us to play. Because we've got two, like, actual blue fetches. Consider the Aether Spikes, but the Bespoke uh, Battle Wagon... Probably going to be the only real thing that we worry about from blue. Let's see. Buried Alive isn't a zero. Bogart Trawler, maybe. Art Servant. Search library for a card with mana value less than or equal to your devotion to black. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Lose three life. And black is also relatively free. Okay. 
We're just going to assume that we're not doing a ton with it, but those are maybes. We did have some interesting multicolored. Is it generatorium? I don't know. Void crawls a maybe. White of the reliquary is pretty good. We're going to be making a ton of tokens too. And then Cursed Wombat is solid. Strength of the Harvest, very solid. Expressive Iteration, although it's a fantastic card, we're not really heavy into blue or red. What's funny about Cyclops Superconductor and Riddlegate Gargoyle, they actually play into the Primal Prayers so we might just consider playing those anyway snapping void crawl is interesting sneaky snacker I don't know if we're going to have enough draw for it or that we're really going to be able to do anything with it I love it in popper I don't think it's appropriate if you're sealed most of the time Let's see what our big hits in. We had a lot of red. Let's see. Got Reiterating Bolt, Find Flames, Terra Surfer. Getting bat Battle Cry is awesome. Molten Gatekeeper is solid. Go Ghost Fire Slice is good. Glimpse and Power Balance probably aren't where we are. Smelted Charge Bug also is free off of the. Uh, thing. Round the implicit maze deals two damage to each creature and planeswalker your opponent's control. That's not bad. You may discard a card. If you do exile the top two cards of your library, you may play them to lend and then create a spoil gorge or weird token. Well, I mean, that's not the worst. And then Void Pouncer is just fantastic. Um... Thriving Skyclaw also plays into the whole theme there, but I think we can skip those. How many freaking lands do we have? Jeez. Idol is an autoplay, regardless of what you're running. Breaker of Creation is fantastic. Drown Yard is fantastic. Pearl Medallion, I don't think fits in. If that heralds the end, is an autoplay with what we have. Two on-color fetches for blue. That's funny. So that's five. Eleven lands? Jeez. I bet all of them. We might not play seething. Also, that's a miscut foil. That's cool. It's only miscut on the front. Nesting Grounds is fantastic when you have the Brood Scale Contaminated. I think it's at least two of the colors. I think it's anything. I think it's black white. I think it's white green. I think it's white green black. I think it's black green. And then that's also just one of the colors. Seething Landscape, it's double off color. But maybe. We might actually end up being like weirdly five color. Um, don't think we can end up running the Aether Spikes. Because we're not going to be heavy enough into blue. Might consider the Riddlegate Gargoyle and the Cyclops Superconductor since we can just play them for free off the Primal Prayers. If you hadn't guessed from the other videos, like, I like playing five colors. Like, I, I like just bashing together the best of everything that I get, but 
Sewing micro spawn. Nightshade triad is fixing. Gift is whatever. Wampus aberration is strong. Evolution witness is strong. Hunger Tide Rises is a tutor. That makes tokens. Malevolent Rumble is strong. Propagator Drone is strong. Basking Bird Scale is very strong. Ooze Wag is strong. And Primal Prayers is strong. Alright. So we're going to put the blue things up in our maybe pile. These... We've already got way too many cards. Muster the Departed may just be... May just be way too slow. But, so let's see. Like, I, I ideally want to be, like, green-white base with a tiny splash of each other thing. Like white and cursed, we definitely want to play those if we can. Rose caught. It's our mid end. That's our lands. Envoy. Definitely want to play envoy. Jilted is a maybe. Decree is a maybe. Because we might have other things that we're trying to do. Guide of Souls is an absolutely. Like you slam that. Idol, Primal Prayers is our goofy combo that we're trying to pull off. Temperamental Oozwag is strong. Asking Brood Scale feeds into everything. Propagator Drone is silly and lets us create more tokens and gives our tokens evolve. The one thing we're missing, oddly enough, that we've had in like almost every sealed pool except for this one is the um, something of Annihilation. The, the green enchantment that lets you tap Eldrazi for mana. Definitely playing Evolution Witness. It's just so good. Aberration Wampus. It's just a big old beater that drops on, two, on four. Stowing Myco Spawn is an absolute must play. It that heralds the end is a must play. Drown Yard Lurker is on our top end. Breaker of Creation is on our top end. Void Pouncer is a maybe. Smelted is a maybe. Ghostfire Slice is nice. Molten Gatekeeper is an absolute. Like, we want to play that. Reckless Pyro Surfer is close. Banged Flames and Reiterating Bolt are also very strong. And just fantastic removal. Strength of the Harvest is effectively a land. Is it Generatorium? So the funny thing about is it Generatorium is like it it makes us mana or not mana it, it makes us energy effectively if we have Guide of Souls out. Guide of Souls and Primal Prayers like is just free two drops. Like all of our two drops end up being free. All of our one drops, all of our tokens um generate energy for us like that's that is a reason to play this card crick i think is just too cute for what we're doing a lot of the time he ends up being a 2-2 two -two life linker that you pay way too much life for um for four like there there is an argument here for you know grim servant to tutor up our guide of souls and i don't hate that like because when it comes in unless it's killed immediately then it's its own thing and we get some stuff for free with this um like we get we get black as a color for free, effectively. Bogart Trawler we can play as an extra land. Bespoke Battle Wagon I think has a 
place in here and also is free because of the fetch. So we've got these, got these maybes. Void Pouncer, really strong, but I don't know that I want to dedicate that much into being red. Snapping Void Craw, also very strong. Muster the Departed just seems like it's not good enough. Jolted Awake as a way to get back our guide is solid. And I like Decree of Justice also. Like, all of our, like, primo removal right here is in red. But we don't have to be in red. Like, we, we do have the Molten Gatekeeper. But... That also is doesn't come at a huge cost. Like, that is one card, and we've got multiple things that we can tutor it with. It's its own thing. It's white. Delta flooded strand. Sleeping landscape. Like, seething landscape is the only one that it only gets, like, our splash colors. So. We may just skip that. Bountiful Landscape at least gets one of our primary colors, which is green, and then also gets our two off colors. Polluted Delta, Flooded Strand, that's its own set of things. 10, 12, it's 12 lands. Like, we, we would really end up restricting ourselves if we ended up going with just 12 lands. Well, not 12, not just 12, but the using those 12 as our primary stuff. Um, we also have the Hunger Tide Rises, which tutors a bunch of our stuff. Let's see. Grim Servant is basically a free tutor for our Guide of Souls if we need it. Or Jolted Awake if we need it. Free is in it doesn't come at a huge deck building cost. Uh, the red that's that's here is a much larger deck building cost. And we might actually end up cutting down on some of these if we get to that. So let's count out where we're at. Three, nine, 14, 16, 20, 24, without counting any of these. That's with a moderate black splash. Three cards, which includes White of the Reliquary and Cursed Wombat. We just go, like, full in on tokens. What does that go to? It's like we already have this really strong token strategy. It's like... That Cursed Wombat, though, is real strong.
What do we lose, really, by dropping black is the question. Lose these two and a tutor. Let's consider if we just dropped black. Then we wouldn't have we wouldn't have to play the fl the polluted delta. Still run that. Still run that. Still run that. Our lands get slightly worse, but not really. Oh, we don't run Vogart Troller either, in that case. Ten. That lets us run seven basics. One, two, three, eight, thirteen, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one. 13, 15, 20, 21. We would add in two things from here. is how are we getting extra stuff? Hmm. Like, is it just running those two? Seems a little strange, but let's look at our creature count. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. How are we getting... How are we getting tokens? This reduces the cost of our giant things. We've got two things that it affects. That ramps and color fixes. Ramps and digs. Let's just build up a token army, give them a vault. Let's just make tokens. That gets big and let's just make tokens. That lets us cycle for tokens. Draws us cards and ramps us. That turns our tokens into lethal threats. That lets us get things back. That makes all our modified creatures. So the counters that we're already putting on with other stuff. Do that. That's just obnoxious that's good that gives all our modified stuff trample that digs for our primal prayers that's just huge it gains us a bunch of life and has annihilator too okay <laughs> So 
Sacrifice any number of creatures, search a library, and or graveyard for a creature card with mana value less than or equal to the number of creatures. Sacrifice this way. Put it onto the battlefield, search for... Search this way, shovel. Hmm. So that's us find things. That's fine. I wish we had a repeatable way of bouncing something or something that's self-bounced. The, the other part is just playing more heavily into red. Like how much we really want to do that. Or if we just want to run more lands. Cause like I'm I'm fine with dropping our black. Or just playing like the one cursed wombat. We play that, we play that, and that. Let's see, where are we at? Count wise, five. Five, ten, fifteen. Twenty-two. So do we go with the Cursed Wombat? Do we go with the Grim? I don't think I want to do Grim or White Reliquary. But now that I'm into it. Let's see, do we have anything that could be used for modifying creatures? Muster isn't the best, but it's also not terrible. Is it really just muster? Fathomable Truths isn't the worst. Charitable Levity also isn't the worst. Thraben isn't the worst. Okay, need to make a decision. All right, Pete. Let's see. We don't want to dig further into red, although red does have some really good removal for us. That's just diluting our plan that much more. Not worrying a ton about... Is kind of terrible. We have like a no removal if we do that. Like three bin charm is arguable to play. Holy crap, we've got all this we've got all the the fetchable things. We've got Reckless Pyrosurfer. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, we have that for the sideboard. We've got our extra removal for the sideboard. Along with Generatorium. 
excuse me, we just go silly making tokens, drop Reckless Pirate Surfer, pop a bunch of our lands to, to fetch stuff, in which case we can actually run the, uh, we can run the Polluted Delta anyway. And I think we're still able to search up almost everything if we need to. That's silly. That's silly, and I love it. Yeah, we're doing that. Okay, so where we ended up, we've got Polluted Delta, Flooded Strand, Urza's Cave. Urza's Cave, you might, like, pitch, or, like, it's slow, but it, it guarantees that you're going to get your lands. Uh, Urza's Cave, Nesting Grounds, because Nesting Grounds let you, lets you move counters between things, which is fantastic with Basking Brood Scale. Because then you can just keep making tokens and powering up your other stuff. Then we have uh, Bountiful Landscape, Contaminated Landscape. Which some of these, like, you might trim up. Because, like, Contaminated really only gets white and blue for us. Uh, Shattered Landscape, which gets white and red. Sheltering Landscape. Deceptive Landscape. Which is arguably our best one and foreboding landscape along with strength of the harvest then we have molten gatekeeper evolution witness reckless pirate surfer guide of souls jilted awake it that heralds the end nightshade dryad malevolent rumble idol of the false gods basking brood scale propagator drone decree of justice snapping void craw envoy of the ancestors bespoke Battle Wagon, Sewing Myco Spawn, Wumpus Aberration, Temperamental Oodswag, Primal Prayers, Rose Caught Knight, Drown Yard Lurker, Breaker of Creation, The Hunger Tide Rises. So, putting things back in mana cost order. Oh, and we would run one mountain, one island, um, Let's see, Five, 11, so six, one mountain, one island, two plains, and two forests, which is a little light on basics. We might want to consider dropping like Urza's Cave for, for basics, but we also have a fair amount of colorless stuff. So let's, let's lay this out. Seven and above. Okay, ones, twos. That's not all our twos. It's a two. Threes. Three, four, it's also a four, five, we don't actually, we don't actually have a six, but we have a seven and an eight, it's there. And our six is really like Decree of Justice. And making three tokens is fine. Nice. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. All right. Well, thank you for joining me on this adventure. As always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff for the algorithm. Please don't forget to vote in the Throwback Thursday poll. It is closing tomorrow at midnight, so uh, give that a look and vote. I think only 11 people have voted so far, so check that out. Um, yeah. And until next time, stay awesome. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.